So is President Biden's Ukraine playbook working? A lot of folks would say not so much, including many Republican senators. They're blasting Team Biden for not taking action sooner. Watch this. Unfortunately, uh, President Biden has once again put us on the back foot and ceded the initiative to Vladimir Putin. What are they waiting for? Why are they not imposing sanctions now? Joe Biden becoming president is the best thing that ever happened, tragically, for Vladimir Putin. As for Vice President Harris, she's getting roasted in some quarters for these remarks on the ongoing crisis. I mean, listen, guys, we're talking about the potential for war in Europe. I mean, let's really take a moment to understand the significance of what we're talking about. Our position is for us very clear, which is as a leader, which we have been bringing together the allies, working together. These are some of the greatest sanctions, if not the, the, the strongest, that we've ever issued. And it will exact absolute harm for the Russian economy and their government. Take your mask off. Anyway, who's in charge? And why does it always feel, or at least often feel, like the Biden administration isn't quite on the same page? Let's discuss with tonight's panel, hosts of the Jason Rance Show on KTTH in Seattle, my affiliate as well. It's Jason Rance. Former State Department deputy spokesperson and Fox News contributor Marie Harf is here. And former Wisconsin Republican congressman and Fox News contributor Sean Duffy as well. Marie, as I mentioned, you were a spokeswoman at the State Department under the Obama administration. Let's just set aside for a moment the criticisms of Harris and the attacks from the Republicans. There's plenty of time for that. To start the conversation, I think it's important for Americans to acknowledge the person who is responsible for what's happening is one man, and it's Vladimir Putin. Yes? Absolutely. Guy, you're absolutely right. He is the one who, over decades now, has tried to reclaim the glory of the Soviet Union. We heard in that crazy speech today a fabricated history where he's trying to make the case that Ukraine should be part of Russia. And look, I think he and a lot of observers are surprised at how unified the West has become. But the last 24 hours are a turning point, and the West has to be ready now to do things like end the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, put on those sanctions that you heard Vice President Harris talk about, and really shore up our NATO members. You know, as we know, this isn't just about Ukraine. There are NATO members in the Baltic states. We are, are, are should be on, on the lookout for Putin not just looking at, at these two breakaway republics, not just looking at Kyiv, but we should be concerned about him pushing even further into Eastern Europe. We cannot trust anything he says. Sean. I was watching some of what the vice president said. She's in Munich. And she was saying, on one hand, the sanctions are going to be really tough, and they are a deterrent. They are a, a successful deterrent. She said, absolutely, against Putin. But we also heard from the president, what, on Friday, when he said, we believe that Putin has already made the decision to move forward with a military invasion, which would suggest that the deterrent, you know, hasn't worked. That seems a little bit incoherent to me. A little incoherent. Of course it does. So uh, she's saying that these sanctions are going to work. Well, listen, today Putin came out and basically said he's going to annex part of um, Ukraine. So th these, these sanctions are, are not doing the job that Kamala Harris and the Biden administration says they're going to do. And when we talk about a weaker, um, uh, a, a weaker uh, platform from the United States and Joe Biden, I mean, when, when you go after American energy, you decrease supply, you increase prices, that only helps uh, Putin. Or the fact that I think Donald Trump did and Joe Biden could have provided better armaments, high-tech armaments to the Ukrainians so they could fight back with the Russians. They want to fight for themselves. If they had the weapons to fight and inflict pain on Russia, Russia might think twice about what they're going to do with Ukraine. But Joe Biden didn't provide him those weapons. Maybe just think of this guy. Maybe if all the weapons we left in Afghanistan, we had taken those and given them to the Ukrainians, maybe they'd have a shot at winning some of this, uh, uh, the, the, this war in the coming days. Jason, I think we can agree that the number one culprit here, as I mentioned, is Putin. How much criticism of President Biden and the administration is fair and warranted at this stage? I think any criticism of any leader is fair, especially since we don't exactly know where Putin's going and we don't know how President Biden and this administration is truly going to react. I agree with the point that actually you had made in your interview with the congressman. I mean, if we basically had 
the game plan going in. We knew basically what Putin was going to do, why he was doing it, and how he would do it, then what would be the argument to not impose those sanctions earlier? Sanctions, when you put them into place, they don't just happen overnight. The impact isn't felt overnight. And so if we had done this days ago or weeks ago, perhaps Putin would be in a weakened position right now to go ahead and give that ridiculous speech today and move in the way that he's moving. I'm not entirely sure that we want to get too involved. It depends on what the Biden administration plan actually is. And right now, I don't think there is a coherent plan. And I think that's why you're hearing different comments that seem to conflict with each other from this administration. All right, we'll leave it there for now.